So in this next lesson, what I want to talk about is the timeline of your application and very general overview of the AMCAS application. And so what I want to stress is the importance of this timeline or the importance of time is that everybody knows that submitting an application early is extremely important, but a lot of students, a lot of cl your classmates really won't understand that importance. You know, they'll, they'll know that it exists and they'll know it's important, but still they'll wait until the very last minute to actually submit everything and to get everything together. And so you can really take advantage of time and experience of knowing that, you know, timing is extremely important and planning ahead is very, very important as well. And I'll actually go over very detailed of when you should do each step and when everything should be done by. So just a very general overview of this lesson, AMCAS tips is the first thing, then we're going to go into primary, secondary, then interview timeline. All right, so the next thing that I want to talk about is just a very general overview of the AMCAS application. And there are other application systems that may be out there that you may be applying to schools, but this is just for the majority of the United States medical schools. So the first thing being, what are they requiring or what do they accept or need? They need a primary application, uh, three to five letters and a transcript. A primary application just is kind of the AMCAS system in general. What they need is a personal statement to be specific. Uh, and the letters, what I want to mention about that is that there's kind of a threshold, right? Three to five is what is recommended by um, pretty much everybody. But the reason why there's actually a good rationale for that is that really if you're getting more than five letters, chances are it's not going to be really enhancing your application in any way. Chances are you're going to increase your probability that somebody in the letter says something not so positive, right? So I'd rather have you have three awesome letters than three awesome letters, a good one and an okay one, right? In my opinion, just having good quality letters of recommendation are going to be much better than just having a ton of letters, right? That being said, if you can find six amazing letters, by all means, send them all in. Transcripts, pretty self-explanatory. So the next thing is once the application does open for submission, right? The application opens for submission around June between the 1st to the 6th. And you have to submit your application, at least if you want the highest probability, on that day or at least seven days after, right? And you may think that, okay, that's kind of intense that, you know, how are you going to get your application in that soon? Well, you have a lot of time to prepare. Just because the application to submit is open on that time frame doesn't mean that you won't have everything, all the questions to answer, everything that you need to fill out beforehand. And I'm going to show you all of that in a little bit. The third thing that we're going to be talking about is the verification process. So what it is is that in order to have your application sent to medical schools, they have to go through a verification process. You can think of it like tax audits, is that before your application is even seen by any medical school, it has to be audited. Everything has to be made sure that it's correct, your transcript specifically. And in the past, it could take one to two weeks, but now it's taking up to three weeks, sometimes even six weeks to get verified. So that's why it's very, very important to submit as early as possible. You can imagine that as time progresses, more people submit applications, verification process takes even longer. Personal statement, always going to be, why do you want to pursue medicine? Why do you want to be a doctor? Pretty much that's what the personal statement question is, and it's always going to be the same. So if you can answer that question in the ways that kind of we will help you to describe in the future, you know, you'll be right on the right track. The primary application also needs 15 experiences. These can be activities, awards, research experience, volunteering, whatever it is, all 15. In addition to those 15 experiences, what you'll also need is you need to pick three of the most meaningful experiences and you'll talk a little bit more about each one of those. Now on to the primary application and so this is really the core of when you have to start getting prepared because believe it or not you have to get prepared much much more advanced than probably most of your classmates are and most of the other students will be and that's how you're going to get that one up on them. So the primary application so this is mainly I'm talking about the personal statement but also the experiences as well and also your transcript things like that. Um, so by December, that's when you should start getting your letters of rec. You should start asking your professors, making sure that you know everything is kind of in order, asking, figuring out who you need to ask, things like that. For more educational resources, like our medical ID cards, check out medicalbasics.com.
So one service that I wanted to mention very quickly was this Interfolio website. And it's a good way to upload your letters of rec. So your teachers would upload the letter of rec directly to Interfolio. And from Interfolio, you could send it to AMCAS system. And AMCAS itself has a fairly easy system. But for example, if you apply to multiple medical schools or if you want to apply to scholarships in the future or whatever it is really also for jobs as well you can kind of store all your letters of rec all in one place and so you don't have to keep asking them right so it does cost a small fee but it is a good system just to hold on to the information by january that's when you should start drafting your first version at least of your personal statement if you can do it earlier by all means do it earlier but this is also the time when you should start writing your 15 experiences as well as the top three most meaningful, right? All these should kind of have first drafts going between January into April. As you can see in April, that's when your personal statement and your activities have to be complete. And I didn't write it here, but this is also probably when you should get your transcripts together, when you should also check up on your letters of rec to make sure all of those are in order and everything's just on track, right? Always just keep good communication with the letter writers with your school to submit transcripts things like that in the first week of may that's when you're going to be the amcasts are actually going to open up for you to fill it out but you can't submit it until probably around the first week of june that's why by may even by april everything should be completely done because now you have at least a month if anything does go wrong well now that's when you have to you know really figure things out you know everything should pretty much be done in april that way you have about one to two months to really just get out all the kinks. And by the first week of June, that's when your application has to be submitted. As soon as the AMCAS application opens, your application has to be submitted. Because by mid to late June, if you submit early enough, it should be uh, mid-June, your application will now be verified. And that's when secondaries can start rolling in. None of this can be completed. You can't move on until that verification step occurs. And that goes into secondaries. And so if you're able to finish your primary application, everything's kind of ready by April. That means in May, you can already start pre-writing your secondaries. And you're probably wondering, why would I ever want to pre-write secondaries? Well, what you'll find out is that once you submit your application, it gets verified. Secondaries will start rolling in in just floods. You'll be applying to probably 30 different schools. You can imagine that secondaries all cost money. If they all cost money, chances are you're going to get a secondary from almost every single school that you apply to simply because these schools are businesses. They want more money, right? So you start pre-writing your secondaries all the way into May. The so secondaries generally never change. So pre-writing is extremely important because your secondaries are just as important as your primaries. A lot of people kind of shrug off the 15 experiences and the secondaries as being second best and that only the personal statement is really what matters. But that's not true at all. The secondary, I've been told, is as important, if not more important sometimes than your personal statement, I mean. So secondary, very important to be just as proactive as your primary application, if not more, because you'll be writing much, much more. In June till September, once you get verified, you'll be getting secondaries left and right. At least that's the goal. Hopefully, you'll be getting secondaries left and right. And you should really try to have a zero to seven day turnover rate. But do remember this quality over quantity. This is the same thing that goes for the primary application is if it's not ready, it's not ready. You know, it's not going to help you go to seven day turnover rate if the quality is sacrificed. Now into your interviews, you can see that July to March is when you're going to have interviews. And it's such a wide gap simply because these schools are all over the place. And we'll actually have about four videos on the interview process itself. So that's all I'll be talking about right now. Be sure to check out our website, medicalbasics.com, for more educational resources like our progress notebook. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more tips and lessons.